Hi everyone, this is a video that has been a long time in the making. If you follow my channel, you will know. Clearly you'll have seen on the thumbnail what I'm talking about, but I just thought I'd give a quick introduction that it is the patchwork jacket that I am going to be talking about, which is from the Modern Wardrobe from the Great British Sewing Bee series that was 2022. This is the one I'm talking about, if you're unsure. You may well have seen that I've completed it and I've posted pictures on Instagram. I have shown it on a video before, but as promised, this video is a bit more in depth. So I just wanted to pop on because the very first video I took, which you'll see straight after this, I don't think I really went into a very good explanation. So I was just here to say, this is the jacket that I made from the book after seeing it on the TV series and falling in love. I will be showing you in this video some of my process that I went through. It is in no means a sew along or tutorial, nothing like that. It's more a uh, follow along with me as I go through the process and it does miss bits where I completely forgot to film. So apologies in advance for any of that. So I won't keep you long. I will just say that this is a collection of videos that I have made whilst sewing this and hopefully it gives you some insight into making it. I will, of course, at the end, come back, show you my jacket and talk through how I got on and, of course, what I thought of the pattern and how I got on making it. I hope you enjoy what you see and when you see me next here, I'll be talking all about the end result for me. I'm sitting here. It is Wednesday, the 1st of June. It's just shy of an hour until the sewing bee is on TV. I'm sitting in my sewing room enjoying a nice glass of G&T and wondering what I should get on with. So I am going to take you along with me on my journey of making the quilted jacket that I talked about doing from this new book to accompany the Great British Sewing Bee series. And the first step that I'm doing tonight, so I should say this will be very disjointed because I will just film as and when I do any part of the jacket, which Lord only knows <laughs> when I'll do bits and pieces. So you will see lots of changes of hairstyle and clothes and lighting, etc. But hopefully you'll enjoy seeing how I get on and obviously the finished jacket at the end of the video. As I say, this is the first step. I showed you the blue fabrics that I wanted to make the squares from, and I showed you the quilted, pre-quilted fabric that I'm planning to use for the lining. So I have now cut 150 <laughs> of these five inch squares from the fabrics that I showed. I won't go through them all, but it's a mixture of fabrics in my stash and So Hayley Jane Fat Quarters that I'm using. So this one I know for sure was one of my So Hayley Janes. This one is one that I made a Stevie top out of and it's like, um, it's a Ruby Star Society. I've then got one from my stash. I have got a lovely birdie one from my stash. And then I've got, I think these are fat quarters from So Hilly Jane's Got Some Flowers. And those ones there. And then this one's definitely from my stash. Uh, it's got kind of 60s, 70s vibe going on. So I have some really lovely squares and I'm gonna get on with ironing all of these tonight. So as it was my first step, I just thought, why not get the camera out? Well actually my iPad, <laughs> get my iPad out and let you know that this is what I'm starting with. So I'm about to iron all these and the next time you'll see me, I suspect, if I remember to record, will be when I have them and either I'll be planning them out or I'll already have planned them out and I'll be showing you what my design is and I'll be stitching them. So yeah, I hope you enjoy following along on my journey to making the quilted jacket.
So I am doing the back panel here first. This is cut, as you can see, on the fold. So unlike the front where I've got to do two mirrored panels and then again on the sleeves I've got to do two matching panels. I'm just in the one big panel. So I have stitched my five patches across for each row and now I'm about to put all the rows together so that will make one panel. I just want to show you what I've done in preparation for stitching the rows together. So I may have to turn the camera around so you can see what's in front of me. Okay, so excuse my wobbly camera work. I'm holding my phone to film this. So here's the first two rows. And what I wanted to show you was the first rows, I have pressed all the seams to the left and then the next row, I've pressed all the seams to the right. So that means when I flip this one over to stitch it, um, then it doesn't give you so much bulk because you won't have all the seams going one way. And I'm just about to sew all the panels together and um, I will show you when I have the completed panel. That's them all sewn together. So the back panel, before obviously I put the backing on or quilt it, looks like this. So I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. I've pressed it all so that I can put to one side. I've now just got to do four more panels for the two fronts and the sleeves. And then we'll start getting on with the job of adding the backing and quilting it all before we can actually <laughs> cut out the pattern pieces. Wow, it's a lot of work. Okay, so I have now got my patchwork panels all finished. Now for me, that is five panels of patchwork because I have the two front panels, the two sleeves, and I've done the back. Now in the TV show and in the book, they don't do patchwork for the back. I'm assuming for the TV show, that was to save on time because obviously they only had I think like four hours to complete the whole jacket so obviously I'm not uh I'm all right for time because I'm just doing this as and when I have a few moments so I'm deviating from the instructions in the book at this stage two reasons firstly they are talking about doing um wadding or batting and then back fabric Whereas I, if you remember rightly, have this pre-quilted fabric, which I'm sort of combining the wadding and the back fabric as that one piece. So I don't need to cut out uh, wadding and a back piece. I've got it in one. But also at this stage, they want you to cut out the pieces. So the two front pieces and the sleeves. And then to do the backing and the wadding about an inch bigger so that you've got a bit of leeway. I would preferred to have had my back piece cover the entire panel. So this is one of my front panels and I have done what they said and cut out the back about an inch all round. I did want to do the entire panel. Then I would do my patchwork stitching and then I would have cut it out but I don't have enough fabric. So if I have time when I do another jacket, so if I have enough fabric, if I did another jacket, I would do the whole panel and then cut out the shape. I just think that would be better in case of any sort of movement. But I've given it the inch around like they suggest. Now, the other thing that is different in my pattern and what I do now, as opposed to the instructions, is if I did have separate uh, wadding inside between the two fabrics. They want you to mark where the dart is on the front pieces there and to cut that out from the wadding so that when you do the dart, obviously you haven't got that big bulk. Now I don't have I don't have that option because obviously mine's all in one, but this this is fairly thin, so I'm hoping once I press the dart, once I make the dart and press it down. Um, I'm hoping it won't be too thick. I might even whack it with a hammer <laughs> if it is a bit bulky and see how I get on. <laughs> you never know. Um, so yeah, so the steps in the book from sort of, if you have the book, from steps five to nine, which are all about the cutting out the pattern pieces and doing all the quilting, I'm not following. So I'll pop this away for a second. So as you saw, I have cut out, this is one of my front panels and I have the other one here. 
So these are um, exact mirror images. So this is going to be my right hand side. And then this one is going to be my left hand side. So I have these with the backing fabric pinned. And what I am going to do now is I am going to go over my quilting lines from this side. So obviously normally when you quilt, you would do it from the right side. But because I want to follow these quilting lines, I'm gonna do it from this side. Now, someone very kindly suggested when I said it's an awful lot of quilting to do, that I maybe do every other line. So I'm still gonna have these lovely sort of kite shaped going on here, but I will have them bigger. So instead of having sort of that size, I'll have it that size. So the hope is that won't take me as long. So I'm gonna crack on with doing these. It does say only to do the front panels, not to do the sleeves. So I'm not going to do the sleeves, obviously. Why give myself extra work if they say I don't need to, but seeing how this turns out if it turns out nicely I will do the back panel because I think that would look very nice so at the moment I'm just deciding between this sort of um, lighter blue or this sort of darker I think I'm going to go with the darker so I'm going to do that step now and I will join you again after I have got that all done Right, so that is the quilting done. And as I said, because I did like how it's turned out on my front panels here, I have gone ahead and done it on the back panel as well. So I'll show you up close. Hopefully you'll be able to see the diamonds that I've done. So if I was following the instructions in the book, at this stage, it wants me to finish my raw edges on the side seams and the shoulders and the armholes before going ahead and pinning and sewing the dart on my front panels. I'm not gonna finish the armholes because normally I would finish them with like an overlocking stitch, but I don't think that will look very nice inside my jacket. If you followed me for a while, you may have seen my Eden jacket I did from Tilly and the Buttons, and I had a similar issue with that because I was using one fabric instead of lining it. So what I did and what I plan to do with this one is I'm going to get some nice bias binding and I'm going to bias bound all the raw edges. So the inside seams where it's connected and then also the shoulder seams. And also hopefully if I can manage it, I'll do where the arm holes are for the sleeves as well. Please excuse my needy dog. <laughs> um, but I don't have any bias binding that I think is pretty enough at the moment to be doing those. So I, what I will do instead is I am going to be doing the darts and then I'm going to sew the main shoulders and side together. And I didn't, did I show you the sleeves? These are my sleeves. So I can sew the sleeves together. And in fact, I can finish the sleeves because I want to overlock the seam on the sleeves and then I'll just press that to one side because I don't need to be putting the bias binding on that. So that's my next steps is to assemble the jacket and then I'm going to have to do a shop and you know how much I hate shopping for sewing stuff. <laughs> so when I've done that and got myself some nice bias binding, I'll be able to carry on with the next steps. So I'm gonna start with the construction of putting these pieces together. So I'm now moving on to finishing those seams on the inside. As I say, I don't wanna just overlock them because I don't think that will look nice and neat when I've spent so much time making it. So I have done the shoulder seams with this rather gorgeous fuchsia pink binding. And I did those ones individually and then they're gonna press open so that when I insert the sleeve that will hold that open so I think that'll look quite nice on the side seams because they're thicker I've got that dart in there as well I'm actually going to just put one piece of binding over both the seams and bind them in one I have done this already on this side so you can see that's nicely uh, bound with the bias binding and I'm just gonna do this last one before I move on to inserting sleeves and finishing it all up with the bias binding outside. So what I wanted to show you before I did it is 
how I personally am doing this bias binding. So what I've done, I have this quarter inch washable double sided tape and I have, hopefully you'll be able to see, stuck the bias binding where I want it. So what I'm going to do is stitch in that fold right there. Then I will fold the whole bias binding over to the other side so it will enclose it and then I will stitch it down. So I thought I would show you because you may not know how to do that. And of course, there's probably other ways of doing it. So I find it easier to use the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then I'll be inserting the sleeves and then we will be getting on with the final step of binding the entire jacket outside. And here is my finished jacket, which hopefully you'll agree is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love the blues. I love how it's turned out. So yeah, really pleased. I've popped it there so I can show you details when I'm talking about it in a bit. But I just want to run through how I found actually following a pattern because it's the only one I've done so far um, from this book. So the first thing, and I think I mentioned this in the video when I did a quick overview of what I thought when I received the book last year. So I'll pop the I'll pop the video up here of the sorry a link to the video where I reviewed the book. So I th you can have a quick look at that. I think it mentions other patterns. But one of the things about this book, and I think all the sewing bee books is that the pattern sizes are not very inclusive, but I don't think it gives a lot of options for anyone who is smaller or larger than a very medium range that they've given here. So for example, the, the books say they've got a key for the cutting out for the lines to follow for tracing. UK women's sizing starting at an eight and only going up to a 22. So anyone smaller than an eight or larger than 22, they don't have it in this book. So I'm not personally very impressed with that. And I do hope that if they do future books with patterns in, they can make a better size inclusive range. So that's something to be aware of. So as I say, they show the key of what you would need to trace if you're tracing out the pattern. Then they talk about standard ready to wear sizes. I'm assuming this is so you can compare what you are in ready to wear. Now, a lot of you sewers will probably not buy a lot of ready to wear, so I'm not sure how helpful this is. But for instance, I thought I was probably, when I made this, like a 12 to 14. So I had a look at the sizes and they said that a 12 is a 36 and a half inch bust and a 29 inch waist. Personally, I'm not sure I agree with that. And a hip of 39 and a half. And then a 14 is basically a couple of inches bigger. So they've got the chest then at 38 and a half, the waist at 31 and the hips at 41 and a half. So that's your gauge and that is at the front of the book. So then when you go to your pattern and I'm not sure if this is all the patterns because I've obviously only done this one. So I might have to check and put on the screen, but they put the finished garment measurements, which I find much more useful. Because uh, I don't know about you, but when I'm doing a sewing pattern, I tend to look at their size charts and then I compare it to the finished measurements. Because quite often what I would sew based on the size chart is not what I eventually end up sewing because of the amount of ease, etc. they have in a garment. So they give the finished garments and because this jacket has no fastenings and it doesn't have to close at the front, they only give the bust out of those three, which for a 12 is 44 inches, uh, 14 is 46 inches. So I think I went with a 12. I will have to double check and pop it on the screen. What they do give, which is quite useful, and I'm pointing it out because I didn't really take any notice of this, and I am wishing I had, <laughs> they put the sleeve length in. So the finished sleeve length for my size in either the 12 or 14, is 19 and a half inches. Oh, sorry, no, the 12 is 19 and a half. The 14 is 19 and three quarters. Um, yeah, I wish I had really taken a bit more notice of that because with this one, the sleeves are a funny length, I think. Um, they're not full length, but they're not three quarter length. They're somewhere in between, which it 
it's not my ideal length. I would lengthen them another time. So I wish I'd taken notes of that. That's why I'm pointing out to you guys. So you don't make the same mistakes as me and ignore that. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. I'm still going to wear it. I'm just saying I'd prefer it longer. They also give you the front length and also the back length. So this is a very cropped jacket. So I'm not bothered about that. But again, if you wanted to change it, you could go by those measurements and work out what you want to do. So... Yeah, starting with the sewing starts here, it tells you that you're going to want to cut approximately 100 squares that are four by four inches. Now, I think I, you'll have seen in the video, I think I did a lot more. I think I did about 150. <laughs> I just wanted choice. That's what I'm saying. So, and they believe, according to this, that you're going to need for each piece. So for a front piece, they're both the same. For a front piece, you will need four across and six down i'm just checking that's correct yes so you'll do four across and six down for that panel and four across and six down for that and they said the same for the sleeves now in the book they don't do the back as patchwork and i think personally that's probably because on the series they had a very short time in which to make this so it was a little bit easier if you see there just a plain back whereas i had all the time in the world and so I did the back as well. So obviously I needed to make a panel up for that one, which I think is why I did the extra squares. Then it tells you obviously to make the rows um, and the cons and everything as I've shown you. So once you have those cut out, it wants you to put your wadding down and lay the pieces over the front of the wadding and roughly cut round by the one inch so that you've got room for the manoeuvre when it comes to stitching through all the layers. Now, obviously I had the... Uh, pre-quilted wadding that I was going to be using as that stitching so the difference I had at this stage which is number step five if you do happen to have the book is that the reason they do the main front pieces first then want you to cut out the wadding is because they want you to mark where the darts are and cut that out of the wadding before you then lay your backing fabric down and cut the piece out because that way when you stitch them all together and you have to put that dart in you're getting rid of a lot of the bulk so it actually makes sense i was a bit confused at first as to why they wanted you to do the front piece first and then this one and then this one because if you've ever done like a blanket where you're putting three layers together you would just put them all together and then stitch through so it's basically because they want to get rid of that bulk but my wadding pre-quilted fabric is not very thick. So I sewed the dart with it in anyway because I couldn't cut it out because I had no backing fabric because obviously the pre-quilted is my backing fabric. Um, and I think I mentioned that I might bash it with a hammer <laughs> if it was too bulky. <laughs> Don't worry, I did not need to do this. Um, it's not too bulky at all and it's absolutely fine. I'll show you in a minute where the darts are. So I think that's why step five confused me at first. But when I read it through, it's literally because they want you to reduce the bulkage there. So you have everything all cut out then. And your backing fabric and your wadding would be a little bit bigger. And then they want you to sew vertical lines from your top of your shoulder all the way down at even spaces. Now, clearly this I differed from again because I was following my diamonds, but you wouldn't need to. And you would do all that. And then obviously you can then trim the pieces down so they're the same size and you can work with them there. Now, everything else I found really straightforward in the pattern after this stage, apart from this binding. Now, pages, um, if you've got the book, pages 182 and 183, They've got the final steps and they've got special technique for attaching binding look, which I think is really useful if you've not done it before. However, <laughs> it says in the step 15 of this, which is the final step. OK, so I'm going to read it out. So sorry for glancing down. Uh, pin the binding in place along the bottom centre front edges and the neckline of the jacket starting from the back center point so the binding in place right all fine all good then they've told you how to do it if you don't know however it says mitering the corners and overlapping the ends 
okay? And it says C special technique. So what they want you to do is mitre these corners, I think there and there. I didn't bother here, I did do it up there. However, I read through this special technique for attaching binding. Sorry, I'm talking and reading. <laughs> And it does not say how to mitre the corners. I am like quadruple checking because I've read this and read this. It tells you how to do a revealed method of bias binding because that's different to concealed. It then tells you how to do a concealed method. Absolutely fine. Also tells you how to overlap your ends to neaten it, which I think I've done inside here. Absolutely fine. Nowhere on this page which is what they gave you in brackets to follow, does it say how to mitre the corners? So that was a little bit frustrating and I think it's quite fiddly. So I had to follow a YouTube tutorial. Now I can't remember which one I'd followed. If I do find it, I'll pop it below, but basically I just looked it up and there were a few different techniques. But I think I just was a bit frustrated that it went to the effort of doing a whole page of how to attach your binding, tells you to mitre the corners in the instructions, gives you the brackets to see the special techniques, but does not tell you how to do that. So I don't know how you feel about that, but I find that quite disappointing. That it tells you to do a specific style for these corners, but not how to do them. But hey ho. So I found it on YouTube. YouTube is just the answer for everything. <laughs> and that's how I did my binding. So my general thoughts on the pattern instructions, illustrations, etc., is that they are very good. Barring the whole binding fiasco and the fact that it's not size inclusive, I found it really straightforward to follow and I do love how it looks. And I'm definitely trying more patterns in here. The next one I want to try is this boat neckline one, which they did in a previous series. I really like that. And I think you can see it's got that button detail, which they did, I think it was series seven. And yeah, so I do want to try that at some point. So I'll obviously give you my thoughts on that as well. But yes, very happy with it as a whole, apart from the bias binding and the sizing. So, this is my jacket. Now, I'm not wearing it at the moment because it's freezing cold here in the UK. So I've got my, I've got a t-shirt and my very warm Stella hoodie on instead. But I thought I'd have my jacket here so I could obviously show you a few things about it. So clearly I went with the mirrored panels so they match and the sleeves are exactly the same. I went with the pink bias binding on the inside that you saw in the video, which I did these um, bound seams inside and I love. Now my sleeves are a mess where I joined them because I did bind the seams down the sides and at the shoulders, but I couldn't quite get to grips with the armholes inside. So I've overlocked them very badly <laughs> but no one is ever going to see them and it holds the sleeve on absolutely fine so I am not bothered <laughs> so what did I do that's not in the book the only thing obviously was the mitered corners which they ask you to do now mine are not perfect by any means but again unless someone comes up and grabs my binding and tells me it's awful I don't care <laughs> So that's my corners there. I did for the top, but at the bottom, I just went round the curve. And hopefully I've got some photos of when I did do that, because that is where I forgot to video. I think I just wanted to get on with it at that point. Because uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I thought I'd run out of bias binding, but luckily I had a whole stash. Popped in this really cute, unique label, because this is very unique. And yeah, it was a straightforward sew. The, oh, I should have said the sleeves. So I also did bias binding on the sleeves. Whereas in the book, I want to say, let me just check. Yep, yeah, you just turn it off. You turn up the cuff and you top stitch it at one and a half centimetres. I didn't want to do that. I thought it would look really nice as I was already doing the bias binding anyway. 
to um, finish off with that. And it's a lovely silky, um, sorry, a satin navy blue, which I thought went really nicely. So as I said, uh, really, really like the jacket. It is a cropped jacket. The sleeves I would definitely do longer another time. I would like to try doing the jacket without patchworking. So basically now that I've got the pattern pieces cut out, I'd just like to get some fabric and just make a plain jacket. I'm also thinking at some point of adding patch pockets, which uh, should be a fairly straightforward make and making it maybe a little bit longer. So I've got uh, not just the crop jacket, but I would like a longer length jacket. And I'm not sure whether I'll do that patchwork or whether I'll do that plain. But yeah, I really like this jacket. I really like the pattern. I'm so glad I finished it before the next series of The Sewing Bee starts because I'd feel really bad if I was still working on this. I am filming this on Wednesday the 12th of April. And I think that The Sewing Bee is starting this month somewhere near the very end and do you know why I think that <laughs> firstly I'm pretty sure they posted somewhere that it was going to be April but the other main reason is because of this I pre-ordered last year's sewing bee book which obviously is the one that I've been oops sorry about the camera there working from here the modern wardrobe wardrobe <laughs> and I did the same again this year I ordered the book you can see two big differences firstly the size not the cost though hmm. um and this one i think they've done it one of the previous years i'm not sure which year it's not a pattern book so a lot of the years they've done pattern books but i think at least one previous years they've done like this it is called the skills and basically it is beyond basics tips and tricks to take your sewing technique to the next level. Now, obviously I've been sewing a while, so a lot of these things I probably already know, but I just thought it'd be nice to have. It teaches you about welt pockets, which I've not done, and cuffs with the, whatever the slit's called in, I haven't done, and just generally thought it'd be a nice book to have. So I pre-ordered that. And going by how previous pre-orders worked, this arrived a week or so before the series started. This arrived today. Now, I have been, sadly, checking the BBC schedule on a daily basis to see if they mention it. It's not mentioned yet, so I think it's going to be the very end of April, but I'm really looking forward to the new series. And hopefully I will make some more out of this, uh, although heaven knows when. So that is everything I wanted to share with you about making my jacket. Please do let me know if you've made it or are planning to make it or what you think. Did you enjoy it? Don't, did you not enjoy it? Um, please do let me know. I love to hear from you in the comments and I'm so sorry it took so long, but hopefully it was worth the wait. And I will catch you all in my next video. Music